What? What do you want? I'm not gonna do it. You can't make me. You know how I feel about these movies. Corey, you do it. I'm not reviewing it. Anytime you have someone else do the review, you end up killing them off later. Do it yourself. <sighs> you can read the title. You know what I'm looking at. It's the Left Behind reboot. Roll the titles already. So, the Left Behind reboot. He knew it was only a matter of time before I looked at this thing. If you want to know my thoughts on the first two Left Behind movies, check out Attack of the End Times movies here. So I'm going into this review assuming that you've either seen the original movies, have read the books, or at least have a basic familiarity with the story. Now I can't remember when I first heard about the Left Behind reboot, mostly because of how hard my head hit the desk. But I do remember seeing an article on ChristianPost.com from February 21st, 2013. In it, they interviewed Tim LaHaye, the author of the Left Behind books, and got his impressions after reading the script. This is what he had to say. It's probably the worst script I've ever read, and I've read scores of them. The plot line is nothing like the book. The only thing they retain are the names of the people and maybe places. There is no redemptive value to this movie. Well, there's a glowing endorsement for your movie. Honestly, after having seen the movie myself finally, that basically sums up my review of it. I don't necessarily mind what they did with the story itself. It goes back and forth from the plane piloted by Rayford Steele and his daughter Chloe on the ground in the first few hours leading up to and immediately after the rapture. Adaptation-wise, they basically took a small portion of the book and expanded it into a full-length movie. Because we all know how well that approach worked for Peter Jackson, right? In all seriousness, though, I actually felt that the approach did work fairly well in this instance. It kept the story simple and really allowed for some good character development. Or at least it would have if they hadn't spent so much time on the quirky passengers of first class. Maybe the writers were thinking, hey, if we're going to be spending so much time with these characters, we need to develop them to let the audience really emotionally connect with what's going on. Now that might work if this was meant to be a standalone movie, but knowing that this is designed to be the start of a new series, it really only works if we're going to be seeing these characters again in later installments and I didn't see them contributing enough to the overall narrative to really be worth bringing back. So all the runtime spent getting to know these characters would have been better spent developing the main characters, or at least giving them something to actually do. After the rapture, all Chloe does is run around looking distraught. As fellow reviewer Nevermore Raven pointed out to me when I discussed the movie with him, it harkens back to the movie that inspired Left Behind in the first place, A Thief in the Night. And whether that was an intentional homage or not, it certainly doesn't do much to endear the movie to me anymore. Buck Williams, played by Chad Michael Murray, doesn't really do anything besides pine for Chloe, take some pictures, and pretend to help Captain Steele after the rapture, but is probably just to stay on his good side so he could flirt with Chloe more. Which brings us at last to Captain Rayford Steele, played by Nicolas Cage. Oh, Nicolas Cage. I don't know about you, but when I think of Nicolas Cage, I think of... I was hoping for just one moment like that. Just something, anything, to break up the monotony and add some kind of entertainment value to this thing, even ironically. Nothing. He gets a little teary-eyed towards the end of the movie when he finally is able to make contact with Chloe after the rapture, but I swear that was the only emotion he showed in the entire movie. And that's disappointing because he is a very talented actor. If anyone could have brought some life to this movie, it's Nicolas Cage. I guess what really gets me about this movie is that it was written by the same guy who wrote the previous three Left Behind movies and the Apocalypse Quadrilogy. And so even after getting the rights back and attempting this reboot which has met with such devastating critical and audience reviews, he's still trying to make more. Seriously, go to the Left Behind movie website. They're trying to crowdfund the sequel and unsurprisingly not doing very well at all. 
look, I understand being persistent about a passion project, but if you're getting progressively worse with each installment, you need to seriously reevaluate what you're doing. But you know, it's not just the writer's fault. If there wasn't an audience for these movies, they wouldn't keep making them. I think the biggest reason I hate End Times movies so much is because they just get in the way of the good Christian movies getting made. You know, if you load up on junk food, you're not going to have enough room for the good stuff. End Times movies are the junk food of Christian movies. So seriously, End Times filmmakers, audiences, stop. Just please, stop. Cinema got trampled on the floor I wish they'd quit already Incessant like the common cold These stupid films, they bring in all the gold I wish they'd quit already There's still time to change your mind You don't have Tired themes always retread The audience is probably misled I wish they'd quit already They'd be great movie wannabes And none of them are written solidly I wish they'd quit already There's still time change your mind please don't make another left behind there's still time to change your mind it was no good the last three times the public spoke the money chimed and we get another left behind please Stop with left behind Oh please no more